Well, congratulations. It's been a, it's been a good season. We have completed yet another season of the horrific podcast. Yeah. And I just could not be happier with how season seven went as compared to season six. <laughs> That's true. It's like we had a really bad opener. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so season six, we worked our way through Esquire's list of the 50 scariest movies of all time. And spoiler warning, they weren't. And <laughs> so for season seven, we kind of created our own list. It was really a compilation of movies that we saw on other lists, but curated a little bit. And the idea was that we were watching movies from like the last three or so years. And so sort of a modern state of horror evaluation. And it was fun. Um, I think, you know, the goal of it was to kind of watch some newer things and that were firmly in the horror genre hopefully, and then see if we saw any like recurring trends or themes or anything. And I think we did. I think it was successful all around. Yeah, throughout the whole season, it seemed like you could kind of tell like the route that they were going. And it was actually something that you kind of pointed out at the beginning of the season, which was the mental health yeah. part of it. Yeah, that was a huge deal. Like it, it was, it's one of those things like once you see it, you can't unsee it. Yeah, but it was like such a prominent thing, and even in some of the the movies where it wasn't quite as emphasized, like in Doctor Sleep, yeah. there was even that line where a plot point was one reason that that the group, the evil group, was running out of the steam was because they mentioned like antidepressants right. made it less powerful in people, and so just even like from I guess like the social and cultural aspect. It was so interweaved in so many of the movies, and it's really interesting. And I think it, it comes a lot with just, as a society, we're at a point now where that's like a popular conversation topic and where, mm -hmm. you know, therapy and mental health and all of that is like sort of at the forefront of social consciousness. And it's interesting to see the way that that's just worked its way into movies, and especially with horror movies where we're looking at the ways to exploit people's deepest fears and because that's a thing people are thinking about, it now is a tool that we can use to mess with them. And I love that. Yeah. Yeah, something that's kind of all on everyone's mind. I do kind of like miss the days where it's like it doesn't have to be explained that they're crazy. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? Where like yeah. it's just like, yeah, n no shit they're crazy. They're walking around just stabbing people. Oh, right, yeah. We, we don't... Uh, need to explicitly call out that they have an imbalance of some particular chemical yeah. in their brain or whatever like yeah. yeah 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 but still i mean all in all it was a good good season we got a lot of like different genres in it so we did yeah we did yeah. 47 meters down that had some mm -hmm. sharks in it we did the wind it had no wind in it or <laughs> and it wasn't even good yeah <laughs> that's true <laughs> We did Lords of Chaos, and we decided to branch out and not do a horror movie that week. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Well, it, yeah. I mean, they definitely weren't all, like, hits on the horror front. But I did Made them interesting. really enjoy the variety. And I think it's interesting, too, to see. It seems like horror is making it into a lot of other areas. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, there's, like, a very vibrant and very productive... Uh, horror in indie film movement going on yeah yeah i mean like uh lady world for example it definitely used some horror elements i wouldn't call it a horror movie but i think it was meant to be disturbing and it borrowed from some of the tried and true horror like tropes you know mm -hmm. yeah for sure i think that and that was another thing we kind of talked about was that it's we feel like it's a, might be getting easier for people to make movies because of the digital mm -hmm. world yeah that that you know we're, we're getting to see some really cool ideas that wouldn't have happened you know because yeah. big big uh, budget pr productions wouldn't want it to happen yeah and one of the things we talked about too a lot was like with blumhouse it seems like they are actively trying to advance less traditional movies which yeah. i think it's great um and then a24 is giving distribution to a lot of 
less traditional movies as well, which I think is cool. So I think Raw is one that they had made available in U.S. theaters, which was a really cool foreign language horror movie that I would never have heard of otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. We got to see some, you know, here's the cool thing I think about what we do, because it's not just like, like if it was just my podcast with just me, like it would just be over slashers, I'm sure. But at least we got to throw in like some good other ones. I prop might not have watched otherwise like hereditary. Yeah. That was really good. And then I really like Midsommar and, and I was really excited to do Dr. Sleep because, you know, I really enjoyed watching the shining. Yeah. For sure. that And that, I mean, it was one of those that it definitely just, like, hit us at the right time, I think. Mm-hmm. So yeah. It kind of worked out, too, because, like, Child's Play just came out. So we, you know, we were able to do a lot of uh, newer newer movies. Yeah. Also, it has come to my attention, because it sounded wrong as soon as I said it, Raw was not an A24 movie. So uh, <laughs> I keep all the same opinions, but that was a bad example. I was just going through it. I didn't even realize that it was in a foreign language. It's been that long since we've done it. Yeah. Yeah, that one was early on. So. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, it's good stuff. I, I enjoyed the variety this season. I liked um, that we had, that it was kind of all over the place and a little unpredictable. And even some that were, I think maybe I probably wouldn't watch again, like The Hole in the Ground, still had kind of some cool stuff. To it i mean like I, I didn't hate seeing it and to in in that category i think lords of chaos was one too that was strictly me being selfish when we were going through the list and like <laughs> yeah. I, I watched it uh watched our, the trailer for it and i was like yep you know mm-hmm. we're watching this doesn't doesn't really matter like i was yeah. just wanted to see it but yeah. uh yeah there was there was definitely there was it seemed like you know like the hole in the ground and possum and like Daniel isn't real. It just seems like it was kind of almost like a whole separate genre of horror, you know, that, mm-hmm. um, which was kind of interesting to get into. Yeah. Yeah. And I think there were, in addition to the like mental health stuff being sort of peppered throughout, there were a few other things that I think we noticed as recurring themes in modern horror. And one that you pointed out early on and kind of going back to like, once you notice it, you can't unsee it is uh, how small the cast is in so many horror movies and the way that horror movies tend to focus on just a few characters. And and I really do think there's something to it as far as not just like being a budgetary concern, but a, you need to spend time enough time with a character to start to feel some sort of empathy for them to be like effectively scared on their behalf. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. if it's just some random guy walking down a hall at night, like, I don't really care. But if that's a character that I understand and I understand what they've been through and what they're trying to get to and the danger that they're in, you know, then I feel like I'm putting myself in that situation as well because I'm wanting to see them succeed and, and make it out. But I know that there's risk. And so I think that's interesting. Um, um, sequels and remakes. Oh, yeah. It seems like we are super... And I guess maybe that's kind of always been a thing in horror. Like, if you look up the variations of Frankenstein movies over the years, there's been a billion. But, like, so much has come out in the Conjuring universe. And so much has come out in the Stephen King universe. And then you see, you know, remakes like Child's Play that's kind of been updated for um, the current world and it just it's interesting to me how much of that is going on and yeah. even in just making a fairly random list we ended up with like multiples from each of those yeah you know like stephen king and uh, uh the conjuring yeah we had pet cemetery and mm-hmm. we uh we had annabelle comes home and then yeah it's it's crazy how it's it's just like a big revolving circle yeah and, and there are definitely movies in both of those that we didn't cover either because we've already done um, an episode on it or because we didn't need like three Conjuring movies right. <laughs> in one season. But yeah, so yeah. that's interesting. And I, um, I feel like there's there's a lot of... Oh, and the, the Purge series was another one. Yeah, that yeah. Had another I was trying to think of that third. So. Yeah, and it's crazy because they're all money makers. That's yeah. what we learned this season is that they're all money makers. Yeah. Yeah, it seemed like just about everything to me this season felt like very 
much a unique one-off that was kind of doing its own thing mm-hmm. or it was a like part of a, a franchise yeah with the exception of the lodge which i feel like was just a very strong standalone horror movie mm-hmm. and then ma which was kind of a strong standalone teen horror movie <laughs> that's a, that's very true yeah i think ma was like good for teenagers probably even though it was rated R. Isn't that what yeah, we decided? That, that felt like such a weird mix of yeah. like target audience versus rating, mm-hmm. but whatever. It's just, it was strange. Like when we started the season, it was kind of weird because we started off with like a bang mm-hmm. with her hereditary. And I think yeah. we kind of knew what we were doing when we were setting that list. Um, and then we watched like mother lady world and Ma, And I was like, Oh <laughs> yeah. You know, like uh, the current state of four is, uh oh but uh yeah then we slowly started getting back to the rhythm yeah yeah and our our order of the episodes changed a lot just because of availability Mm -hmm. there because a lot of these movies were so new they were only available through like some kind of premium subscription or Mm -hmm. whatever and um, we waited till they were available to rent yeah yep yep but yeah this one's in the books i'm excited and a good week yeah we'll be We'll be back next week to kick off season eight, which is going to be a whole new ball game. Yeah. I'm very excited for it for, I would say, fairly selfish reasons, but we will get into that in next week's episode. Yeah. And so when we talked, we were going to try to make this like a not very long episode. So to wrap up the time, because this is even shorter, um, yep. I have this that I wanted to talk about. Okay. Now I've had the time of my life no I never felt like this before yeah that was really good and then I really like Midsommar which is coming out yeah (laughs) or came out (laughs) I know I was gonna get that messed up I think that's interesting. Um, and another one I had in my notes. Um, just stalling for time here, boss.